Hello everyone, welcome to this another exciting demo session on SAP Y5 and Fiori training with me Anubhav. You must have seen lots of YouTube videos, demo videos, also different reviews and different channels about this demo session on SAP Y5 and Fiori. I personally warm welcome everybody coming to this channel and watching this demo session today with me. In this demo session, we will have a quick introduction of SAP UI5 and we will create in next 30 minutes a very simple Fiori application on the real system. With, before we start this session, I would like to quickly clarify about this course. To learn this course, there is no prerequisite. No matter which background you come from, if you have little programming knowledge, even C programming knowledge, this is sufficient enough for you to get started with the course. The second important thing is there is no Java knowledge required to learn this course. Many of you have asked me these questions. That is the reason I am covering them first of all. Some of you may think, Anubhav, is it Java mandatory because I come from ABAP background or BOBW background? I have no knowledge on Java. Will it be mandatory to learn Java or will you teach Java or will the Java is required for this course? No, there is no Java required for this course. However, the JavaScript is the programming language we will be using throughout this course, which I will be covering as part of this course. So you don't need to know even JavaScript that is covered as part of this course. The entire course is covered without any copy paste. So most of the time you see that when you watch out some tutorials, trainers are just doing a copy paste of code from some source. They are pasting the code quickly into the system and saying that just to save some time, we are doing a copy paste. This way you may not understand and miss out some important lines, phrases and keywords which you ideally should know while you're writing the code. So we will have zero copy paste of code, no tolerance for the code copy paste. And I would strongly recommend every single one of you, please do not copy paste the code rather than write this with your own hands into the system. So it will be always better for you to get through every single line of code. And that's when the real problem comes when you write the code, then a copy paste because copy paste brings your output naturally in a plain vanilla world. You would actually learn when you face problems. Even an ABAP developer can learn UI5 and Fury. This was the next topmost question which was asked to me. Yes, this course is designed in such a way that an ABAP developer can also learn. And by the way, there is no much ABAP knowledge required to learn UI5 and Fiori. However, there is a little ABAP knowledge required to learn all data development in SAP Gateway but as far as the UI5 Fiori, the screens, the user interface, UX design is concerned, there is no, no need and no knowledge of ABAP required. So those who come from non-ABAP background, this course is also for you. Even you are a functional consultant, you can start building UI5 and Fiori applications once we complete this course together. We will be using the latest tool in the market, so-called WebIDE and WebIDE full stack in SAP Cloud Platform to be able to give shape up to our UI5 and Fiori applications. This will cover real-time scenarios. We will build end-to-end -end Fiori applications with real use cases and the, the, the best, the good practices like component JS, router, root match handler, manifest JSON. We will have an end-to-end -end development cycle covered as if it's a real-time project we are creating. Not that all, I will guide you towards the best practices during this course. What are all to-dos or not to-dos while writing the code? Because at times you may be able to write the code, get your output, but you may still have this fear of code review. That what will happen if I go for code review? Have I written it in the right way? So writing code is one thing, but writing the right code is another thing. So we will look at the best practices while writing the code. What will make your code reusable, extensible, and reviewable at front of your architect and the product team? We will have we have the highest number of YouTube views today on this channel. 
you can go ahead and check out our channel with the name Anubhav Oberoi on the YouTube and check out some cool demos also on the YouTube. With that, let's get started. A quick overview, the course outline, the phases of the course. The first phase of the course includes foundation for UI5, which includes HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery. This will be covered as part of the course and without any prior knowledge of these things, you will be able to learn these, these foundation things. In the second phase of this course, we will talk about SAP UI5 framework and controls. We will learn about the architecture of SAP UI5 itself. What is the SAP UI5 library? Where can you find the complete documentation for SAP UI5? And how can you use these control libraries by understanding the complete end-to-end -end control hierarchies in SAP UI5? We will be developing all these applications end-to-end -end as part of our tool, so-called Web IDE. We will include the concepts like formatters, reusable, uh, reusable JavaScript files, scaffolding templates, fragments, and all the reusable code which we write in the right order, including the project structure which it should follow. So maybe these terms look jargon for you at this point of time but as and when we cover them you will be easily able to understand and utilize it in your project in the third phase of this course we will talk about fury introduction and application development where we will talk about the difference between user interface and user experience the start using the libraries of sap fury including sap m library highly and we'll build different variety of controls like buttons, drop down, select control, multi combo box, list control, types of list control, tables, complicated controls like object header, object, object pages, and then we'll have also icon tab filter, icon tab bar, navigation concept, component JS router, root match handler, manifest JSON, and entire project structure in the same way the way you look at in standard Fury applications. In the final phase of this course, we will start creating all data services on SAP NetWeaver Gateway. Why it is needed? How do you expose your data which you have today in your ECC system, suite on HANA system, or S4 HANA system to the Fury applications? And that's what happens via the O data services. We will have a deep dive inside creating end-to-end -end OData services. Those who are not from above background, they can also learn because we will cover something called service generation technique with which you will be also able to build end-to-end -end OData services which can be consumed by Fury applications in the system. We will perform all the crude operations, create, read, update, delete, together with that image processing, function import, association, deep insert, all these concepts will be part of this piece. And then finally, we will integrate our Fury app with the OData which we will build and deploy this application to the SAP system and deliver it via transport request to the quality and production systems. And we will learn about the best practices. What should you do or avoid while building an app? All of this will be on latest tool, so-called Web IDE and Web IDE full stack plus a promise from my side of no copy paste. With that, let's quickly look at the overview. So we will learn installation of development tool as well, because many of you have no clue about how to get started with UI5. You're absolutely new. You might have heard or seen or watched some demo session, and you might have heard from your colleagues or manager, there is a project coming on UI5, there's a project coming on Fiori, and you got to work on that project, and you are kind of now uh, maybe afraid of, of of learning these things you don't know you don't have any clue about it so it's actually for an absolute beginner some of you are already working on ui5 but here you would like to learn about the best practices the right practices the the way you should develop you are very confused already in your team wherever, wherever you're working as a ui5 developer how in, how to do things what is the right way to arrange things in the right order? What is the correct project structure? What are the best practices and the guidelines provided by SAP? All these things you're confused about. We will actually look at the best practices and the end-to-end -end development cycle in the phase two. So we'll 
install the development tool, we'll develop end-to-end -end app. Finally, we will deploy this application in a real system and then integrate with Fiori Launchpad. You can see this is the kind of screen you would get at the end of the day where you will click on a tile and that would launch your application which you built over this course. With that, let's quickly move on to the uh, steps for our demo session, real stuff in the system. So wherever you start in your life, first time creating any kind of computer program, what is that you start with? So what are the steps to create a simple computer program? We start from very scratch. We start from ground zero. So steps to create a computer program, I would say the very first step is initialization. Initialization is a step in which you're actually loading the dependencies. For example, if you're writing a C program, we used to use preprocessor directives where we say include studio.h or conio.h. So what are you doing? You're actually calling a preprocessor directory to load the dependency on studio.h and conio.h, which includes your printf, scanf functions. Yeah. So that's the first step when you start with initialization of any computer program. If needed, you do initialization. In ABAP programming world, every program which you write in ABAP starts with a statement called report, which is actually a trigger point to your driver program in ABAP to tell, hey, I would like to start my program from here, and it's a report program. That's called initialization step. In the next subsequent step, you will define variables which you would be using in your program. After that, defining the variables, you will use the variables and implement the application logic, the actual core application logic. For example, if you want to build a calculator, you will be creating a core application logic by joining two variables or multiplying them or just subtracting them from each other. That's what will be the step number three. In this step number four, you would probably load the data from some source and manipulate. In the next subsequent step, you will probably display the output to the user. And once user close your report or close your program, you will do a final cleanup in the process. So whatever you declared, whatever you created, initialized, you just wanted to clear it off. You want to, you know, just clear it off and destroy it all. So these are all the steps to create a simple computer program. Now, applying these common steps, you can create C program, Java program, ABAP program, be it a, any kind of program, be it an Android application. Now, these steps, when we apply also on UI5, we would get a beautiful Fury user experience screen. So let us go ahead and see how can we create such a small computer program to create our first Fury application as part of the demo. So when it comes to SAP UI5, so this is another important interview question. Uh, so guys, we will also cover all the interview questions throughout this course, and I will also provide you the certification guidance for SAP UI5 or SAP Fury. All right, as part of this course. So throughout this course in the lessons which we cover, I will cover all the interview questions. The first interview question that comes on your way is Anubhav, what is the difference between SAP UI5 and Fiori? This was the most important question which many times might have confused you and might have uh, been asked to you, what is the difference? So guys, please understand, SAP UI5 is the framework and Fiori is about the user experience. So if I give you some tools to build something, you can create anything with those tools. If I give you hammer, drill machine, I give you some raw material, you can start creating something out of it, right? But what comes out at the end as a finished product may not be up to the expectation of the person who has given you all the resources. So then probably you would go with certain guidelines provided by the person who is giving you the resources 
and that's what exactly Fiori is. So UI5 is nothing but the tools and options which you will use to be able to create something considering the guidelines which helps you to define and design an application which gets you a best user experience. So SAP Fiori is the final outcome which is nothing but following the guidelines provided by SAP to create an application which achieves which is in which intends to achieve the best user experience of its so business class right business class user experience so basically in one sense if you say fiori is the guideline or the ultimate application which is built is called a fiori app because this app follows these guidelines provided by sap fiori design guidelines and the app which comes out achieves the best user experience of its own business class all right so ui5 is the framework fiori is the design principles the guidelines to follow and create these applications and the what comes out ultimately so called fiori applications there are a lot of guidelines there are a lot of things which you need to keep it in mind like there are a lot of templates which we also use like master detail uh, we use work list, smart filter, variety of templates which we use to create Fury user experience, achieve this Fury user experience. Now, with that quickly, let's move on and see how can we create our first simple Fury application using this tool, using this framework called UI5. Now, the tool which we will be using here is SAP Web IDE tool, which is used in the market the most. Okay, it's the, the, the tool which, is, which we'll use to develop. So my question to all of you, can you run and develop a C program in a notepad file? Probably you'll say no, I cannot run a C program in a notepad file. If I just say type in I and I'll say print F I, I cannot execute it here because what it needs, it needs a runtime environment, so called C compiler which can compile this code and which can give this code to the operating system and then it runs, right? Similarly, if you want to create a Fiori application, it is mandatory to load this UI5 framework so that the, the code which you write can be understood by this framework and then ultimately it gives you the output. So this is our first step called initialization. So in as part of the initialization step for a UI5 program the very first thing which we need to do is we need to load the UI5 framework while developing so to load the UI5 framework there are two techniques first technique is called load from local computer another is load from internet so i will show you in our next session how to load this from local computer but for time being i will show you how to load this ui5 framework while you're writing a program from internet to load this we use uh, a url of course we we need to use a url to load this ui5 framework from internet what is that url that url is https open ui5 dot hana dot on demand dot com slash resources slash sap ui core dot gs so this is the url we will be using guys to load the sap ui5 so called open ui5 as part of our page right now what code will you write to load it so you have to write a special code called a script code. You're saying, hey, please run this script. And you need to tell the source, what is the source from where the script needs to be executed. And in this source, you will be putting the URL. Yeah? And that is what is you will be writing to load the UI5 as part of your application. That is step one, the initialization step of a program. Now the question comes, where do we write all this? Can we write this in a notepad file? Yes, probably, yes, you can also write this in a notepad file. But notepad doesn't give you those advanced features of searching, organizing your content, organizing the file structure and all that. That is the reason we want to use a tool which is proven and heavily used in the market by almost every company today. 
almost 90% of the companies today using Web IDE. Other 10% are using other tools like Eclipse, and there's another tool called um, in the market. They, there is another tool which is uh, getting a little more popular. I forgot the name. Let me just try to recall that name. So Neptune, yes. So some of these companies are also using Neptune and Eclipse tool. But 90% of the companies are going with WebID. In the coming days, I will also explain you why WebID should be used to do development on UI5, then Eclipse or Neptune. Okay, we will discuss that in coming days. But right now, just understand this is the current uh, current uh, structure or current setup in most of the companies. So let us go ahead and now use so-called WebIDE tool. Why it is called WebIDE? Because it runs on web it runs on a web browser yeah you don't need to uh, probably run a, a dedicated windows application that is the biggest advantage of this tool because then it it makes it platform independent you can you have a browser in a in a in a in a mac system or in a linux system or a windows system wherever you have as long as a browser you can run this tool okay so web and ID stands for integrated development environment for developing a program. So let us go ahead and launch web ID. So I'm going to go to my browser. Don't worry. I will explain you how to set up this web ID, how to set up this web ID in your computer. I will explain you this in the next session right now. For the demo purpose, I have already installed in my system and I'm just going to launch it. So let me just quickly launch my Web IDE, which is already there in my system. This is the Web IDE. As you can see, I'm using the Chrome browser to run this. I'm just going to quickly connect to my user. So I just quickly connect to my user there, pass my user credentials. Don't worry about all this thing. I will explain you in the next session how to set up. We will actually start from ground level zero. We will learn how to create or download the web ID, where to download it from. If you want to run it in the in the downloaded flavor in your local machine, or we will also learn web ID full stack, which means how to use it directly from internet, from SAP cloud platform. Okay, don't worry about these terms and jargons. We will discuss them in, in, in detail. Now I'm gonna quickly go back and start with a fresh project. So I'm going to right click here as a new folder and I will say my demo session. So Anubo UI5 demo, just create a new project. So this is your project. You can observe guys, it's actually like your any development environment. If you have ever worked with uh, SEAT in a BAP environment, you would have, you can compare this with SEAT. SEAT is exactly like that, right? In ABAP SEAT transaction code, Whenever you go to SEAT, your ABAP workbench, you would observe that on the left hand side there is a panel. There are some options on the top. And then there is uh, some search option. And then there is a there is an object hierarchy where you can see your different packages, different data dictionary objects. And when you double click on an object, the detail gets loaded on the right side for that object, which is your main canvas area, work area, where you start writing your code. Or changing your object details over here so it's exactly like that it's it's nothing different than SEAT so now I'm con coming here to the folder I'm going to create a new file and I will start with a file called unabout.html so guys what is an HTML file please understand the browsers are designed to understand HTML by its nature okay every browser do not understand C programming C++, Java, VB, .NET, Android. They don't understand UI5. They don't understand. They understand HTML. So that's why we start the first baby step towards creating an HTML file. Say, okay. And every HTML file starts with something, includes something called uh, a header and a body. So we start with an HTML document. And inside this, we will put first a header. Don't worry, this will also be covered in detail in our chapter where we will start with HTML. Right now, it's just a demo session, so I'm just quickly covering the B6 over here. But there is a dedicated session planned for learning HTML. All right. So now, 
in HTML document includes a header and a body just like humans have a brain and a body similarly in HTML document or HTML page whatever you call it it includes a header and a body so this is the header this is the body of HTML okay now in the header what we do all the brain activities will be taken care here so the brain says please initialize please load SAP UI 5 now maybe if I just run this page it will also work fine so I'll just say welcome to www.onlinefioretrainings.com just save this up and I will quickly select this file and click on this run button to execute my program and I just click on execute button and you can see quickly it has launched in another tab in my Chrome browser where it will now execute this program and you get a beautiful output so called welcome to www.onlinefuretrainings.com that's what you got it now I'm gonna go back and now watch out I will do one thing I will load the UI 5 now here UI 5 framework from the internet so I will reuse the same command script tag to trigger a script the source of this script is on internet and that's the exact URL which we will put now. Guys, every single line of code, line by line, no copy paste of code. That will be the style in which we will be learning all everything. All right. So that's our script tag. Now, what it does actually, you can also copy and test this URL quickly in the another tab and see if it is showing something to you. So I just paste it on another browser session and just quickly show you, is it loading something? Is our URL is correct? Yeah, whatever we're trying to load, is that a correct URL? That is what I wanted to just make sure. And yes, you see it's loading some piece of code. So basically you don't need to understand this piece of code, but just understand there's something at this place which is going to get loaded. And basically it is your UI5 framework. And this process of loading, initializing UI5 framework in your browser, which can understand your code, is called Bootstrap. What is this called? Bootstrap. Bootstrapping. So what is a bootstrapping? Bootstrapping is a process of loading or initializing the framework needed to understand code which you write. So we will be writing a code, right? We will be writing a UI5 application code. And this code nobody can understand until unless nobody can understand until unless you will load this dependency this UI5 framework until you load the UI5 framework nobody can understand your code so this code which you will be writing now next nobody can understand until you have somebody who can understand this code like for example C program which you write you need to see compiler similarly to run a UI5 program you need the UI5 framework and this code is actually loading UI5 framework since it is initializing it is loading something like for example when you start your computer the process of starting a computer is called booting correct what is happening that time the operating system is getting loaded in the hard disk so that's booting similarly for our application which we are writing here this application this is a booting process this is a starting process it starts with loading the UI5 framework which can understand your code and next subsequent step I will write my code so in this let's come back to the next step of writing a program so next step of writing a program is defining the variables so now I will define a button to, I want to create a button in a fury app so I will define a button now together with that guys please understand this framework comes with a lot of libraries it's a framework what is a framework framework is a collection of libraries what a definition framework is a collection of libraries now what is a library a library is a collection of books yes similarly here in the programming library is a collection of classes what is a class 
class is a collection of attributes, methods, and events. Right? That's what a class is. Superb, guys. So watch out here. You are loading a framework, whole framework. Now this framework has so many libraries and those libraries has so many classes. So now it's a very heavyweight framework. Now you cannot afford to, to actually load everything because then your loading time will be so high. Rather you want to just load the library which you are interested to work with. So I'm interested to work with mobile library provided by SAP. So that's the reason I will tell during the initialization hey, which library to load? And that's what our next step is. So we will go ahead and say, hey, please load SAP data SAP UI library. Okay. And I will say, hey, please load mobile library so that I can create my application. Data SAP hyphen UI hyphen lib. So you don't have to put complete library. Data SAP uh, SAP UI lib that's all you write and this will load now the library for you which library are we loading out of that framework we are not loading everything okay we are not loading everything yeah we are just loading the mobile library okay we are just loading the mobile library my friends we are not loading everything so we are telling the system please load only one library which is data hyphen SAP UI libs actually it's called libs because it can you can also load multiple libraries separating with comma comma another library I will show you these libraries later so that's the next is programming stuff which we write here step by step line by line now since this library is loaded this library has a class the class name is button class if you want to create a button that is the class you would use so var I want to create spider-man I want to create a variable with the name called Spider-Man. I say new. Please use this library SAPM. And this library contains a button. Please create me a button quickly. I will put here parenthesis and end this. So we are now creating an object of a button class over here. What is the syntax to create a UI5 control? What is the syntax to create a new control? What is the syntax? The syntax is very simple. Just have to say var. Var is a keyword. Okay. Just have to say var. Your object name. So let me write all the keywords in the bold letters. Equals to new is also keyword. Then you have to use library name. Dot control name. Control name or the class name, whatever you call it. Maybe let me write class name. Maybe more easy for you to recall. And then parentheses, and inside that you will have two parameters SID and S properties. So, what is SID? SID is nothing but ID of the unique ID of the object, or I would say UI control, which we create. Because you may have so many buttons on the UI. You may have 20 buttons. How do you recognize every single button uniquely? That's why you need to give ID. Now, coming to the S properties. S properties is nothing but the properties, attributes of the UI control. Like let me quickly tell you what can be the property so we'll have text property for a button we can have an event called press event all right all that can go inside color of a button icon of a button so now you may be confused Anubo, where can i see the list of all properties for all the controls i will show you in the chapter number eight when we will talk about ui5 sdk software development kit so you can easily find out for every class what are all the properties, aggregations, events, and methods it proposes? We will discuss about that in coming class. In one of the chapter, detailed, we will have a dedicated chapter only for finding these properties, events, methods, and aggregations. 
all right we will discuss that and what is aggregation what is association what is a property all that also we will cover from scratch step by step and now important thing guys please understand this may look very trivial but this is so important funda fox funda fox was a word which i've invented in my school days to to mark something important something which i should not forget something which is critical because here you are working with the computer program computer program the symbols will break you or make you symbols have a special meaning so symbols are important symbols will break you or make you right so symbols can break you or make you so this symbol is called parenthesis this symbol is called curly braces i see developers with 20 years or 10 years or 15 years of experience they while they are calling on a skype call while they are on a call on with your with their colleagues they cannot tell the difference between these or while they are asking somebody to write a code they say put a bracket they don't they meant this but they are saying bracket bracket is actually this you need to understand or maybe your architect is on the call and guiding you to write the code and asking you to put a bracket you should put this one if your architect asks you to put a parenthesis you should put this one so it's very important it's very trivial but yet so important in a programming world that we remember the names of these symbols and this is actually called bracket awesome so that's a funda fox very important from interview point of view and for your point of view to write the code so now when you're writing properties remember properties are written always within curly braces yeah let's go ahead and do that so now i'm going to go back so you see var my name of object i put spider-man whatever you like you can put that new sapm button and i'm going to put here ID of my button. I can say ID Spidey. Yeah, that's the ID of my button I'm keeping. Comma curly braces. And inside that I'm going to write all the properties. Press enter. And maybe write a text property for my button. And I will say welcome developers. Save that up. So that's going to be the title or the label of my button. Now the question is definitely there in your mind. Anuba, where is this property? How do you know? where is this property coming from this comes from sdk i will cover sdk in chapter number eight that time you'll be more comfortable so that's your step number two after initialization you have created your variable now if probably you want application logic let's do that so i want to write an application logic when somebody press on the button what should happen a function should get called and in this function i will say hey please throw me a alert pop-up and alert is a predefined function here just like sci you name in above this is also a predefined function over here in 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 the program in a ui5 program which you can use to throw a pop-up and say hey man how are you doing hey guys are you enjoying Yeah, that's a step by step line by line tutorial guys this is will this will be the style we will be adopting throughout this entire course so we have created a very simple control over here so let me write down some commented code create a variable which is nothing but the instance of a ui control provide the property and define the application logic that's our next step and now moving to the next step load the data from source right now we can omit this uh, step. We don't how, have. yes please i have we, a small question we will we will take the question just let me logically complete all next all right. five minutes is all for your technical non-technical questions so let's let's just complete this in another five minutes and then we can take up the questions all right thank you so much for your patience so now next one is once we have created this the next step we have displayed the output to the user so right now this is just a variable you declared 
the output is not yet displayed to the user if I just go back on another tab and refresh here you would see your button won't appear it won't appear because you just declared the button you didn't tell the system where to position the button so I'm gonna go back and now say hey please place my button oh spider-man that's my variable name please place this button in my comp in my body of HTML and that body of HTML I'm gonna write down here so I'll just put here an element maybe a div element division tag it's called and I just give an ID called Anubal and I'm gonna say hey please show this in my output where to place this button please go ahead and place my button in this element which is part of my body body is what people see mind is what people cannot see so anything which you put in the body will be visible to the user so we are somehow sending our button control to the body in the body we have an element a placeholder this is just a canvas area this is a placeholder which will hold that hold that control so you are parking this is your parking for the car this is your car and this is your car parking right so got to park your car in the in the parking we parked it and now save this come back and beautifully let's refresh with a refresh button wow there you go welcome developers you see a beautiful button congratulations this is your first control of sap ui5 on your screen i just click on the button and voila hey guys how are you enjoying that's what has happened congratulations but yet it may not look like a fury like experience or fury screen so what is the first element to create a fury app is the theme experience so sap provides you so many predefined themes what as a theme does suppose you are uh, it's a christmas season thanksgiving season coming up what you would like to do everybody's in festival mood right so what they do everything which they write everything what they do it's all flooded with santa claus wallpapers festival mood and even your gmail account when you go you can apply a theme on your gmail right you apply a theme and then everything comes into the snow kind of theme in your gmail right or may, maybe in your mobile you apply a theme and then santa claus is there on your mobile any any icon any app you open it it, it rings some bell like christmas bells right your ringtone is changed to a, a jingle bell jingle bell right everything is in that color of festival theming similarly in ui5 if you want your entire application in one shot to look like a fury experience fury theme you can load the theme from here from the bootstrap you can say data sap ui theme and you can say hey please load sap underscore please theme this is the latest theme which was available from fury 2.0 onwards and we are just loading that theme now so this will now load the theme but where will the theme be apply so that will apply to the body and here we have to say please apply the theme here so you have to add a class name sap ui body to apply this theme. now this line may confuse you may think oh, well, what is this class is this an object oriented class no guys class stands for classification we are saying hey this whole body of my page should be in this theme uh, should be in this uh, classification which means this classification code would be written somewhere and that is actually written in the bleach theme which you are loading all right now how do i know this this is something we'll cover in chapter number five where we will talk about css all right now i'm going to save this up and come back and watch out the same page i just refresh now and you see now it's changed it's no more the brown color right you see it's a different color little gray color which you have achieved here with the bleach theme maybe i would also show you another theme which is you are you guys are more familiar so-called sap blue crystal just save this up come back and watch out once again refresh and voila can you see this light blue color background that's a theme which you guys are even more comfortable these days uh, which you might have seen on fury application the little blue color um, experience theme which uh, the the signature theme for fury actually so thank you so much for watching this video if you feel this video is helpful for you and your colleagues Please do share this video with all your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much for all your efforts putting in understanding this concept with me. Please do like, subscribe to my channel 
to get more videos like this you will be getting notified automatically once you subscribe to this channel if you want to get more deep into the course please don't hesitate to subscribe to my course on sap ui5 and fury development sap abap on hana with s4 on our technical modules and also probably on sap fury launchpad and advanced fury training on web id full stack this is anubhav boy signing out thank you so much see you again goodbye